All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this session where we are moving into module three. And basically, uh, we are looking at uh, mapping and monitoring habitat loss and also looking at some of the illegal ac activities that happen within the environment. My name is Julius Buyengo. I will be taking you through this session. It is uh, session three, uh, module three. It deals with the application of geoinformation systems in uh, tracking illegal activities. And for this session, we'll be looking at uh, two major activities. Are looking at wildlife poaching and looking at uh, uh, illegal logging and trafficking. So what is the overview of the module? Basically we want to uh, equip participants with the technical and analytical skills uh, towards the application of geoinformation systems in de detecting, analyzing and combating illegal environmental activities and we'll be focusing on uh, wildlife poaching, uh, trafficking and uh, illegal logging. I will deliver this content in uh, a number of ways. Number one is uh, through, through theory. Uh, number two, we are going to use case studies just to understand how things are, are happening on the ground. Then towards the end of the module, we are going to do a hands-on practical exercise towards uh, mapping of uh, poaching activities and uh, illegal logging activities. So what is the objective of the mo module? Basically, we just want to teach you or to help you understand the, how to gather geospatial data how to analyze patterns and uh, integrate uh, remote sensing activities for purposes of uh, ensuring that we are making informed decisions and also supporting enfo enforcement activities on the ground. Learning objectives. Uh, by the end of this module, uh, we anticipate that uh, participants will understand the principles of GS and remote sensing. Of course, we have already covered that. Uh, participants will be able to uh, apply geospatial data to uh, detect and analyze the illegal activities by mapping the hotspot areas. Participants will be able to integrate satellite data uh, and ground-based observations uh, into GIS to generate analytics. And basically, the final one is uh, undertaking spatial analysis in risk mapping, trying to understand trends and uh, sharing int intelligence in terms of uh, our wildlife hotspots and uh, illegal logging activities. Uh, towards understanding uh, environmental crime, so we are talking about three major components. Number one is uh, wildlife crimes, where we are talking about poaching, which refers to illegal hunting, killing and capturing of wildlife. Uh, there is uh, trafficking, which is the illegal trade of wildlife products, uh, such as uh, wildlife rhino, rhino horns, exotic pests, among other animals, we will see within the case studies. Uh, there are forestry crimes, where we're talking about uh, illegal logging, uh, harvesting, transporting, processing and trading in timber uh, in violation of the envir existing environmental laws. There is uh, also forest encroachment and uh, uh, degradation. Then uh, there, are, uh, there is a component of cross-cutting activities, uh, where there are issues related to the human wildlife conflict as a result of uh, encroachment or habitat loss. Then there are aspects of uh, organized crime networks which are, are dealing with exploitation or illegal exploitation of our natural resources. So why is uh, GIS a vital, vital tool? And basically we are saying that it's one of the most important tools that we can deploy uh, towards environmental crime monitoring. And uh, one of the ways in which we can uh, do environmental crime monitoring is by tracking the hotspots uh, where these illegal activities are happening. So you can see the map from the, uh, on the left of the screen, trying to visualize uh, crime patterns in terms of mag mapping illegal activities uh, related to uh, poaching. In this map, we have overlaid the uh, elephant ranges. Of course, there are ports where these uh, elephant products are exported to the outer world. And of course, we have overlaid the uh, trafficking hotspots. So basically, based on this, you can understand where these products are, where the elephants are being murdered or killed, and uh, where the export uh, or the exit points uh, uh, that the, elef the elephant products are exiting the African continent to the outer world. Uh, map number two is, talking about, uh, is about uh, predictive analysis, where we are identifying uh, risk areas for future incidents. So we, here we have uh, it's a matter of uh, overlaying different data sets within the geospatial environment 
For example, we can overlay settlement or population. We can overlay with land use land cover. Uh, we can overlay with the uh, protected areas. We can overlay with the elevation. We can overlay with the climate. Then uh, do uh, an analysis to understand how these factors are playing towards uh, uh, creating uh, risky environments for our wildlife or for our forests. Uh, talking about crime monitoring, number three, we are saying that uh, GIS can be a very important component or a, a very key uh, tool in supporting uh, evidence enforcement. Of course, the poaching or illegal acti uh, logging activities are happening. And whenever we get on the ground, there's always a need to get uh, ground information or evidence. So within the GIS, we can map the specific locations where the poaching has uh, happened or the logging has happened. And we can in link these with the photos of the situation as it was found. And this one can be presented uh, as part of uh, evidence towards supporting prosecutions uh, on the perpetrators of uh, environmental crime. Uh, bullet number four is talking about resource allocation. Uh, basically, GIS is one of the tools that you can use to help uh, make decisions towards the resource allo allocation, uh, towards the monitoring of uh, some of the, these uh, important ecosystems, important uh, flora and fauna. So we are, we are saying that we can use the information to, uh, to identify the hotspots and the courtesy of this. We can do resource allocation. That's, uh, we are talking about the allocation of rangers, allocation of equipment to do monitoring, surveillance cameras. So courtesy of the information systems, we can identify the hotspot areas, the risk areas. And based on this, we can, we as environmental managers or wildlife managers, we can deploy resources to the high risk areas. Of course, uh, finally, GIS uh, is a very important uh, tool in terms of uh, creating awareness on the importance of conservation and uh, fostering uh, community participation in uh, environmental conservation activities. So as a tool, we can use it to deploy information or display information statistics uh, related to uh, how wildlife is uh, being lost, how forests are being degraded within the communities. And through these, our communities can be able to understand or get a visual impression of what is happening on the ground. Getting into the use cases, uh, of course the information has been used to, to track wa uh, uh, wildlife and uh, uh, there are colors that have been uh, put on wildlife including uh, elephants just to monitor their movement in real time. And this is very key towards uh, ensuring that uh, these animals are alive and whenever anything happens to these animals you can be able to uh, quickly identify this courtesy of uh, uh, when these motions or the movement of animals stops or when the collars uh, are, are interfered with, you can easily detect that there is uh, something has happened on the elephant that was uh, uh, once uh, tagged. Uh, towards forestry, we can uh, uh, detect illegal logging. And this is courtesy of using remotely sensed data. You can see the image on the right is a high resolution image of the Congo. And through periodic monitoring, that is, for example, we are uh, doing uh, uh, high resolution or capturing high resolution images of a certain forest or protected area uh, in, uh, in a timely manner, like on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. And if you compare these images over time, you can be able to detect any illegal activities that will be happening on the, on the ground, specifically related to forest degradation. This is a case example of uh, pangolin and how the information systems uh, has been used to map their hotspots in Cameroon. Uh, also map the exit uh, channels and uh, towards also map uh, the, the, ma the, the, the markets uh, in the Far East. So to the left you'll see that uh, there is a map uh, showing the pangolin uh, uh, ecosystems or the environments or habitats within, the exist, within which they exist within Cameroon. And the courtesy of the incidents that have occurred over time, uh, there is an a GI, a geospatial analysis that has been under, undertaken to uh, identify the most risk-prone uh, risk areas or uh, areas where a lot of uh, poaching is happening. That is where you can see the red. And as we spread out, we find the risk zones tend to uh, reduce. Uh, courtesy of the yellow color, 
so the transitioning from the red, red to orange towards uh, a ye a yellow shows that the, reduce, the reducing levels in terms of uh, incidences of uh, pangolin poaching. And uh, to the right, you can see the exit, exit routes. Of course, the, the, the dots uh, uh, on the inset map are showing the areas where the pangolins are, uh, are poached. Then they, are, uh, they exit Cameroon into Nigeria where they are exported to uh, the Far East. Uh, these uh, images are courtesy of a research by Tim's and uh, his colleagues in the year 2023. Uh, the information has also been deployed in uh, monitoring uh, illegal forest uh, logging in Peru and uh, also trying to map the exit routes. Uh, to the left, you can see a map detect, uh, depicting the concentration of forest roads from uh, 2015 to 2017. The areas in red being the, the very high risk areas in terms of degradation or loss. Uh, the yellow ones or gear, green ones showing areas that the forest is still uh, intact. And the yellow ones areas where you find that there is, of course, there is the forest loss, but there is at a medium scale. Uh, the middle uh, image is showing the areas uh, within Peru where the illegal timber has been uh, seized by the authorities uh, in terms of statistics. statistics. And uh, it also shows the deforestation hotspots uh, over time. Uh, of course, they, you can see there are new hotspots, areas where it's, uh, the, uh, deforestation is intensifying, where it's persistent, where it's sporadic, uh, where it's diminishing uh, over time. So these are some of the things that we can present uh, courtesy of uh, the information systems and remote sensing. Uh, to the right, showing the uh, routes through which uh, these illegal timber Gets its way to the gets its way from inland to the port of Lima, uh, before it is uh, exported or, or overseas uh, aboard uh, uh, ships. Now, uh, uh, towards the end of this uh, unit, we are going to do a hands-on uh, practical where we'll be mapping uh, poaching hotspots and also mapping uh, illegal logging uh, sites. Uh, we will require ArcGIS Pro, and we will be providing elephant mortality data of course, with illegal logging uh, sites. Uh, we are going, the software we are going to use is the uh, ArcGIS uh, uh, Pro, and uh, we will pull these data sets from uh, ArcGIS Online. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you as we engage in the practical activity. Uh, nice time.